This broken off tree and the one behind me were on their way to becoming the towering coast redwood trees that you see along the coasts of Southern Oregon and Northern California. These ones and the two behind me were just getting to the point where they were starting to outgrow all these brushy species around them and be free to grow into giant redwood trees. But it's not going to happen because bears killed them. They killed these two, those two, they killed that one, the one behind it they're working on. It'll be dead soon. Over here, they're working on this one. There's a rare one that they haven't got yet. There's another one that died and broke off. For those of us who are trying to restore redwood forests, the bears are making it almost impossible. This is happening all too common along the coastal forest. In this area, the bears have killed almost every redwood tree. And there's another one back here. Would have been a redwood tree, but instead we just get brush. Here's another one. Here's what they do. They scrape the bark off so they can get a treat of the sweet sap and cambium underneath. They don't get much nutrition out of it. It's mostly just satisfying their sweet tooth. They do it in the spring and early summer when the sap starts flowing, the bark gets loose right before the berries get ripe. Bears eat a lot of grasses and other things. There's a lot to eat that time of year, but there's not a lot of sweet things. So this just satisfies their craving for sweets. They'll peel the bark off of one, get a little taste, move on to the next one, peel the bark off of that one. Little do they know, they are preventing a magnificent redwood forest from ever happening. Just to satisfy their sweet tooth. Another one that died and fell over. I could go on all day showing you examples because they're just everywhere. There are a few scattered fir trees here, but mostly this is just turning back into brushland. Coast redwoods are one of the few conifers that sprout back from the stump, similar to the way a lot of broadleaf trees do. They did kill the tree, and in this case, there was no brush around it, so it is sprouting back from the stump. The other ones back there, the brush is overtaking them, and it'll just smother them out. We have several over here that have sprouted back, but here's what's happening. They're going after the sprouts. They'll just keep coming back to it year after year and pulling the bark off of all of them until they're all dead. They just started on this one, just getting to this one. These ones down here are sprouting back from the ones they killed, but it's right in between these dug firs which are gonna overtake them and shade them out. Speaking of Douglas fir, they're taking out the Douglas fir too. They prefer redwood, but they will do the fir too. They got part of that one. The tree's healing over it, but it'll open it up to rot. There's a stump of one they killed. I salvaged the dead tree a couple years ago. Another stump from one they killed. They killed that one. Stump of a redwood tree they killed. Now they're going after a re-sprout. This dug fir is about three feet in diameter. The bigger trees are harder to peel, so sometimes they just dig into them a little bit, then move on. It's growing fungus. They've opened it up to rot. They killed this one. A big scar in that one. Now we just have this brush field in a place that could have been trees. Look what they did here. Last year they scraped all the bark off this exposed root. Then we have some older scars from years before. It tried to grow over it, but it opened it up to rot and the tree just rotted over before it was even dead. But at least it has this tree to take its place. Whoop, wait, no, it's dead. Well, at least there's this redwood here. Oh, wait a minute. They're working on that one too. Here's a dug fir that rotted over right after the bears tore it open and opened it up to rot. This redwood next to it could take its place, but the bears are going to kill it. They killed that one. There's one down in the brush that they killed and it rotted over. A couple up there. These trees are just getting to the stage where the bears prefer them. They're probably already starting to work on them and a lot of those will probably be killed. Go in there and take a look at them. Of course. They're almost all the way around it. Another year or two and they'll have this one dead. Got that one. 
working on that one. The next one. Yeah, every one of them. We got that one, that one, that one. They're not dead yet, but they're working on them. This stand we just walked into is actually the timber company's property next to me. In these coastal forests, the bears are making it almost impossible to do reforestation. After logging, after wildfire, or for those of us who are trying to restore brush lands back to forest. Before we wrap this up, I'll show you something else they're killing too. Something I noticed just a few years ago, they're starting to develop a taste for grand fur. Nice, straight, tall, grand fur, but they have it almost girdled all the way around. Grand fur has thinner bark than Douglas fir or redwood, which makes it easier for them to peel the bark off of even the larger trees, like this one. About a three foot diameter tree. Here are the remains of one they killed. There's the one next to it. This one's actually a dug fir. It's long dead. Here's the top of it laying on the ground. Another grand fir. In this whole stand, they're picking out the largest, fastest growing, healthiest trees. It's a big concern with the grand fir because grand fir are very non-rot resistant. If you put a scar in the base of a grand fir, it's going to rot. So this really nice stand of grand fir has no long-term potential because of the bears. On these bigger redwood trees, the bark is thick and the bears have a more difficult time getting through it. But the bears have found a workaround for that problem. They just climb up the tree where they can find thinner bark, which kills the top out of the tree. More alarming behavior I've noticed recently is they're starting to scratch at the base of even the larger redwoods. I noticed this one just two years ago. It's a fast growing redwood, so it's healing over, but it's new and alarming behavior. This is all relatively new behavior for bears. If you talk to foresters and people who've been in this area a lot longer than I have, they say this is something you just didn't see a few decades ago. Once in a while you might see a territorial scratching where a bear has scratched up a tree, but this thing where they're peeling off the bark to eat the cambium and lick the sap underneath, this is new behavior. Especially like they're doing now, where in some areas they're taking out most of the trees in the area. And unlike humans who also take out trees, bears don't do reforestation. They don't plant new trees to replace them. Not all bears do this, but the mother bears who do are teaching it to their cubs. And over the past few decades, the problem has been quickly escalating. Not only is this new behavior for bears, but bear populations in many of our coastal areas have exploded in recent years to unnatural levels. If you talk to people who've been in the area a very long time, they used to see bears once in a while. They would see scat and tracks around the woods. They knew they were around, but they didn't actually run into a bear that often. Last year, I was in this area much of the summer, and I was seeing on average three bears a day, and I wasn't even looking for them. Those kind of bear populations are just unheard of. Historically, the type of bears we have around here, Ursus americanus, the American black bear, had predators that kept their populations in check. One of those predators were grizzly bears. Male grizzly bears kept their own populations in check, as well as those of black bears. If a male grizzly bear wanted to mate with a female that had cubs, he would kill her cubs, so after he had his way with her, she would raise his instead of that other bear's cubs. They're also known for killing black bear cubs, not for mating, but for other reasons. Wolves likely killed them too. The indigenous people who used to live here, they used to hunt bears. Well, over a hundred years ago, we killed off the grizzlies. We killed off the wolves. We ran out the indigenous people. Early European settlers, they hunted bears. They kept the populations in check. But in recent decades, we've moved into a society that just doesn't hunt bears as much as it used to. People still do hunt bears, but just not the way they used to. The states of Oregon and California in recent decades have passed laws that also make it more difficult to hunt bears. This all correlates with the recent explosion in bear populations. 
What we have here is a two-part problem. A problem of a change in behavior and a problem in overpopulation. I have a hypothesis for something that has changed in the local environment that may be contributing to the change in behavior. If there's enough interest in this video, I may do a video about that. So what do we do now? Do we just ignore the problem, pretend it's not happening? Continue protecting the overpopulating bears? Or do we face the problem, restore nature back to a balance so we can protect and restore our forests, which will also be habitat for future bear generations, if we don't let them destroy it?